let's go Matt side. Along with Roger Reed, here's Jamie Vasky. In sports, we have rivalries. Ali Frazier, Jordan versus Bird, the Yankees versus the Red Sox, and for Northeast Iowa Wrestling, it is the West Delaware Hawks and the Independence Mustangs. Good evening, everybody. Along with Roger Reed, this is Jamie Vasky. And what a night this is. What a production it is going to be here tonight. Media all around the place. Packed, almost packed gym here in Independence, Iowa. It's the West Delaware Hawks and the Independence Mustangs go at it here tonight in Walmart Conference Wrestling Action. Roger? When you get into these rivalries like this, uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. You throw out all the throw out all the records. It's going to be a packed house, and it, it's going to be a brawl here tonight in Independence. Well, you're exactly right, Jamie. What we've got going on right now is a media frenzy. We have KCRG 9.2 here. We've got uh, we've got a couple more radio stations. We've got uh, some outstanding uh, color people that are going to do it on there. We've got Coach Gable and KJ Pilcher in the house. Dan McCool. From the Des Moines Register, uh, we've got it all here, and you are exactly right. You're going to throw out everything tonight, and it's going to be settled on the mat. Uh, we've been doing this long enough. You were part of this rivalry as a wrestler at West Delaware, and I can tell you what, Jamie Vasky, uh, um, I've been part of this for about 13 years now, and each year it's very interesting. Only one year, that was last year, where the Hawks have come in and dominated this series. But other than that, it's, it's come down to the last match. Uh, we've been part of this thing. And uh, there's been some unbelievable battles. There's been upsets. There's been all kinds of crazy things. All you got to do is go back about four years at the old Independence Gym. The Independence Mustangs were highly favored, and the Hawks came in and took it away from them. Absolutely. You look at this series the last few years, and since they started the Battle of the Dell Buck Trophy, West Delaware has swept the Mustangs. They've won four matchups this trophy. This is the fourth, fifth year for this trophy. West Delaware has won all four so far. But the Independence Mustangs nipped the Hawks at the Battle of Waterloo. 41 to 30 the final in that dual meet. In that dual meet. And this should be another good one here tonight as we're going to start at weight class 113. The Hawks come in here tw or 16 and 6 on the season. The Mustangs come in here at 22 and 5. West Delaware leads this series. 37 to 15, and again 4 and 0 in the Dell Buck for the Dell Buck Trophy. This rivalry started in the 1955-56 season. As we take a look at the Independence Mustangs and their coaching staff, head coach Michael Doyle, he is in his 19th season here at Independence as his assistant coaches Keith Donnelly, Brian Locker, Matt. Matt Shannon, Eric Weber, Eric Weber, Josh Weber, Mike Zimmerly, Brett Adams, and Caleb Budzee. We've got an outstanding coaching staff, Jamie, and uh, you know, Coach, Doyle is, Coach Doyle has been doing this a long time, and uh, uh, this is one of his better teams that he's got, that he's had in the past four or five years. And they're very young, but in that lineup, they've got some very good experience. So. Um, Tell you what, uh, he's thinking he's got a team that's going to take that Bucktail Trophy uh, away from West Delaware and put it in their trophy case tonight. I tell you what, it's going to be a great meet. It's going to be a great atmosphere, and uh, you know, throw it all away. It's a rivalry, first class, and uh, we're going to have all the hold-by-hold -hold action for you uh, right here. We've got Mr. Scott Casper of Takedown Wrestling in the house, Jamie, and uh, he's a lot of fun. Oh, he certainly is. He likes he likes his wrestling and. Uh, we definitely appreciate him being here tonight. You, As, uh, you've got some technology going here. I, We're hope, see I, I hope so. Gonna Hopefully he remembers work. to turn it on. But <clears throat> we will take a quick break, and we'll get our national anthem in here and uh, get back and get the starting lineups here for both teams. For both teams here tonight. Right after this, you're listening to High School Wrestling from KMCH Sports. And welcome back here to Independence High School as we get you set for high school wrestling. Are they doing the anthem? As we're going to have our national anthem here in just a little bit. So if we can 
get this on, we will get it on here for you. I believe they're doing the national anthem. As uh, we'll hear from our PA man, our MC, Scott Casper, here in just a little bit. As uh, what a dual meet this is going to be. I don't think we... Well, we'll, uh, we'll take a quick break as they do the starting lineups here. Uh, we were hoping to have Scott Casper hooked up, hooked up here and ready to go, and we could get him on the air, but that's not going to work. So we'll be right back after our national anthem to get you started for this dual meet. You're listening again to High School Wrestling from KMCH Sports. As we will get you back here, we're going to play our national anthem for you here as the independents, some singers, girl singers here from Independence. We'll perform our national anthem. Great job, ladies, as we get you back for wrestling now as we're ready to go. As we mentioned before, we will start at weight class 113 as, Roger, the starting lineups here for the West Delaware Hawks and the Independence Mustangs. Well, that's right, Jamie. They've got, uh, they just had them on the, uh, uh, they just announced them. They did a great job here, and uh, we'll go through those uh, quickly for you. Weight class 113, we're going to start at weight class 113, and... Patrick Woods will take on Mitch Evans for Independence. And Mitch is a junior for the uh, Mustangs. At weight class 120, Logan Riley will take on uh, Drew Davis. Drew Dr Davis is a sophomore. Weight class 126, Sam Phillips will take on the freshman Tanner Erickson Dale. He comes in with a record of 6 and 23. At weight class 132, the senior for West Delaware, Connor Wickman, will take on Peyton Nolteen for Independence, and Peyton is a freshman. He comes in at five and 20. Weight class 138, Bo Vasky, the senior for West Delaware, will take on from Independence, Luke House. Luke is 15 and 22, and Luke House, <coughs> Luke House is a sophomore for the Mustangs. Weight class 145, Timmy Tutton, We'll take on top ranked Chase Straw. That will be a good match. Chase Straw, he's 36 and 0 for the Mustangs, taking on the senior from West Delaware. Weight class 152, Max Reidenauer. Max Reidenauer for West Delaware will take on from Independence, Jake Jewell. Jake is, a, is 24 and 8, and he is a sophomore. Weight class 160, Jake Voss will take on Nick Holt, who's 28 and 8. And Holt, Holt is a sophomore also. Another one of those good sophomores that uh, Coach Doyle has in the lineup there, Jamie. Weight class 170, Brett Lammers from West Delaware, the outstanding junior, ranked number 8 in the state right now. He will take on Zach Kramer. Kramer is 25 and 11, and uh, Kramer is a senior. Weight class 182, 
Number three ranked Kyle Fank for Independence. He's 35 and one, ladies and gentlemen. will take on the outstanding sophomore, Coy Russell from West Delaware. Weight class 195. West Delaware senior, Scotty Taylor, will take on Matt McMillan. McMillan is 28 and nine and having quite a season for a sophomore. Weight class 220, Will Winger for the Hawks. West Delaware Hawks will take on for the Mustangs, Jason Grover, who's 24 and 14, I believe. Brett Bowers. Brett Bowers. Yes. Okay, I thought they had Grover there. We'll see, Jamie. They got Bre they got Grover and Bowers listed. We'll see which one. We'll see which one. They may move Grover up and take Bowers out of there. Bowers is nine and 12, and uh, Grover is 24 and 14. Weight class 285 will end the match, will end the duel at 285, where West Delaware's Richie Heverin, the upstart senior, having a fantastic year, will take on Mitch Sisaliski from Independence. I'll tell you what, uh, Jamie, this is one of those matches like we saw last Thursday at Epworth of Western Dubuque, where West Delaware's got about five favorites, Independence got about five solid favorites. There's gonna be three or four toss-ups, and again, it's anybody's match. Yeah, absolutely. Is, uh It'll, uh, I tell you what, what an atmosphere this is here tonight. The lights are off. They've got, uh, they've got strobe lights around the uh, arena. They've got a spotlight, and what a night this is going to be as we are weight class 113. And up here for West Delaware is senior Patrick Woods. And for the Independence Mustangs is Mitchell Evans. Mitch Evans comes into tonight's duel. Evans is having a good year, Jamie. He's third, he's, uh, that's not his record. Sorry about that. I've got it right here. Evans is 26 on 11, and he's got 15 falls on the year. So uh, he's got 20 falls. Excuse me. He's got 20 falls on the year. He's having a great year, but Patrick Woods, ranked number one. Tell you what, he's got a huge takedown there with that front headlock. Last time these two tangled, it was a 16 to 1 technical fall by a Woods. And you know... Uh, no, Woods has the same thing on his mind tonight. If West Delaware is going to win this duel, Patrick Woods has to score bonus points. If Independence is going to win this duel, Mitch Evans has to wrestle well and uh, score when he can and not let Woods uh, get his offense going. Woods is going to cut Evans loose. There's a double leg by Woods. He's in deep. Evans is wrapped around the waist of Woods, and Woods is going to pull his head out, and he's going to score two there. Oh, boy, they're going to ding Woods for stalling there. For not for stalling, for locking his hands off that two-point takedown. I think that's going to be a penalty, and it's going to be Evans one point. And Coach Voss not happy about that as Woods had that doubled in, Jamie, but the official hadn't awarded the two points yet. Uh, we got two officials going on tonight, so uh, we'll see if Woods is going to cut him loose. Woods will cut him loose again. And we got the uh, scoreboards kind of around each corner. Woods is up four to three right now. I'm telling you, uh, there's that front headlock by Woods. He has Evans on his back. This would be a huge start for West Delaware. Woods is gonna, Woods is gonna set that butch up. Now reverse half Nelson. Evans is gonna try to go belly down. Woods is gonna tee out, and Evans is gonna roll out of it. Jamie, that's just exactly what we talked about. If West Delaware's gonna win this, when you get somebody on their back, they gotta score the fall. Yeah, you do, and you, like you said, get someone on their back, get the fall because those points could mean a diff big difference in the uh, dual score, and you've got to be able to come out here and get falls when, you, when you're And swimming. you know, Coach Doyle has talked to his wrestlers about where you're not favored. you got to go out there and bust your tail. Don't give up the big points. If you get thrown on your back, fight like crazy to get off your back. Right now, Patrick Woods has a cross-face cradle in on Evans, and it is tight. That could be a fall. Referee down looking close. 13 seconds left in the first period. Woods, is, Woods has that cross-face cradle, and he's going to get three, and Evans doing a nice job. Straighten that leg, pulled the cross face off, and uh, that's going to be three more back for, for Woods, and it's 12 to 3. Jamie, there's twice Woods had Evans on his back, and Evans, Evans able to fight himself off. Yeah, and you know, that's big for Mitch Evans here, is, you know, last time you gave up a tech fall and you get in the in Independence won the duel, uh, you know, not giving up that fall here is, is, is huge for Independence and Mitch Evans. Patrick Woods comes into tonight's meet 33 and 0 on the season. Having a great another his great senior season, trying to follow up on that um, that state championship year last year. And uh, Woods is going to start neutral again. He's going to score a two point takedown on Evans right with that textbook front headlock. He curled around the head of Evans, put his head right in the hole, right in the rib cage of Mitch Evans. 
Caught that inside leg, pulled himself behind, scored two. It's now 14 to three up on our scoreboard. And you know, uh, Woods is thinking one thing right now, Jamie Vasky, that is a fall. And Evans is thinking right now, I gotta stay off my back. If I give up the major, that's one thing. If I give up the technical fall, that's another thing, but I don't wanna give up the six. And he's doing a great job right now with hand control. Woods is doing a great job with his wings, trying to load up that chicken wing on the left side of Evans. Evans with a short sit. <clears throat> There's Woods with a nice snap back, and Woods is picking up back points on Evans. Evans could pick up a two-point reversal as he threw the cross bodies, threw the legs in on Woods. He's trying to pull himself up. Woods is getting back points off of it. Coach Voss and Coach Litter up, Coach Doyle up off his chair, and uh, Evans might uh, score a two-point reversal. He did. There's a two for Woods and a two-point reversal for Evans. And now Evans high right in the leg. He's going to pick up two at 16 to five with 38 seconds left. Mitch Evans doing a super, super job right now at that crossbody right. He's got Woods belly down in the center of the mat. Crossbody right in on the right. Power half Nelson on the left trying to put a little pressure on Patrick Woods. Woods now not doing a whole lot of moving underneath. Nice rotation by Evans as he gets Woods off his base. Woods now, Woods now with his hips up, maybe a high leg over. As Evans gets a little sloppy with the legs, he's down on his right hip. Power half Nelson now by Evans, slightly had Woods turned. Woods had to go belly down. Right leg back in for Evans. Evans doing a nice job riding that cross body. at 16 to five, and we're going to the third period. Evans' choice, and you know where he's gonna go, Jim, he's gonna go up on top and throw that leg back in. And that, if you're Patrick Woods, you know, you're, you're sitting here, you just got a major decision here, so uh, you, you've gotta try to get something, get out of, don't let him throw that legs in right away. 16 to five, only a major right now for Woods. You know, Woods was coming in here thinking uh, fall, thinking six. Last time these two wrestled at the Battle of, Battle of Waterloo, that was on Saturday, December 21st, first day of winter. And uh, Woods all over Evans by a 16-1 technical fall. But I'll tell you what, uh, this would be, a, this would be a, a big jump start for Evans here and the Independence Mustangs, Jamie. Yeah, it really would. And you know, if he could, uh, if, if Mitch Evans can continue what he's doing and just give up a major, you're already ahead of where we were in the last time these two teams wrestled. Woods tonight, right now has got to work some hand control. Evans doing a nice job. He's got that inside wrist on the right of Woods. 1.30 left to go. Woods trying to get back to his base. Evans reaches back and grabs that right ankle. Now we're going to get warning against Woods for stalling as Evans is up on top. Evans, Evans trying to load up a cradle on Woods. He's got a ball and chain. Woods comes to his feet. Nice hand control. Evans drops down to a single. He's got the right leg of Patrick Woods up in the air. Woods trying to work some hand control. Woods trying for a two-point reversal here. A front trip. Nice job by Evans. Back trip on Woods. Had Woods momentarily going to his back. The, the uh, youngster from Independence is wrestling with a lot of confidence right now. It's 55 seconds left to go. Hard cross face by Evans. <clears throat> and Woods trying to get back to his uh, base. Evans trying to lock, lock up a cross face cradle on Woods. Woods with nice hand control splits the hands of Evans. Evans with an inside wrist on the left side of Woods. And we're going to get stalling. And get stalling against Woods at one point for Evans. 16 to 6. 33 seconds left to go. Patrick Woods being ridden out this whole uh, third period, Jamie Vasquez. We're going to get a stalemate. You're the number one ranked wrestler in the state. You know you're going to wrestle some guys that are tough on top. You got to get moving if you're Patrick Woods. Yeah, you do. And right now he's not, you know, he's not doing that. He's, he's, he's bellied out. He hasn't been able to come up. And one time he did come to his feet. You know, he, he was close, but Evans had kept hand control and was able to break him back down. So there's you know, a nice sit-out turn in by Woods. Yep, nice sit-out turn in by Woods. And no hand control there, and that's a nice job by Evans following Woods around with a tight waist and a chop. 12 seconds left to go. Tell you what, Independence. Independence is going to gain a point here, Jamie, as this was a technical fall in favor of Patrick Woods last time. It's going to be a 16-6 major, and Woods will win this match. So the Hawks will go up early, 4-0. But Jamie, you know Coach Voss, I know Coach Voss, he was thinking six out of that match, or at least and you didn't get it, really. at least five. But, you know, that's, that's going to put the Hawks up, but I tell you what, that was a, that, not what the Hawks wanted to start it. If you're the Mustangs, that's great. You know, you, you lost the match, but you still, uh, you still gained a point from where the duel was last time. That's right. <laughs> Here's one of our toss-up matches here, Jamie. 
Logan Riley for West Delaware. Outstanding sophomore. And for uh, Independence, we're not sure who they're going to throw out on the mat yet. Uh, they've got a youngster over. Must be a TV timeout. Television timeout as this thing is on a 9.2. KCRG 9.2. They've got Drew Davis listed. Be Drew Davis. Should be... Drew Davis, and let's check the skinny. Davis is 26 and 11. He's got 15 falls. So uh, one of those wins was over Logan Riley. Jamie, Logan Riley's been wrestling very well uh, as of late, but uh, you know, Drew Davis Independence is running that very tough schedule, wrestling up at the, uh, uh, wrestling up at the uh, uh, Minnesota meet up there in the clash. And uh, they've just done a nice job. Co Coach Doyle has toughened these youngsters up. There's a throw. No throw. Lateral drop attempt by Riley. He kept his pigtails in there, kept his toes in. But uh, Davis fought out of it. There's a nice double by Davis in on the legs of Riley, and off the edge of the mat they go. Nice start. Nice flurry by both wrestlers. Riley felt a little bit of pressure there and uh, thought he might give Davis a launch. Davis recovering out of that throw. Hard collar tie, there's a drop single by Davis. He's in tight on the right leg, nice down block. Nice down block by Riley, he's got a front headlock. Trying to circle to the right side, he's gonna windmill out of it. And he's gonna attack the, uh, he's gonna attack the legs of Davis. Hard wizard now by Riley. And back to neutral we go. Great scramble by both wrestlers. I'll tell you what, a lot of action here at weight class 120. And Riley's gonna lose his headgear, so we'll have to get that back on and situated. And we're gonna go back to, uh, back to neutral. That brings Coach Doyle out of his chair, offering some encouragement to his uh, youngster. And back to the center we go with 106 left to go. Great action so far. And Logan Riley comes in here 14 and 10 this season on the in the varsity lineup. Drew Davis, of course, uh, having a good season of his own as he comes in here tonight as he's got a 26 and 11 record. Get a nice front headlock again by Riley and a nice counter by Davis. Front headlock and, and uh, Riley tries to cut that corner on Davis. Davis does a nice job controlling that right elbow. There's another single by Davis in deep. Nice whizzer. Nice whizzer by Riley. Little hip toss attempt by Davis. And Riley finds his balance and back to, back to neutral we go. Davis back in on that single. Front headlock again by, by Riley. He's going to go to that cross ankle pick. Let's see if he can finish it this time. We're right on the edge of the mat, and off the edge of the mat they go. Off far right center. And uh, Coach Payton off his chair, saying, hey, control that elbow on your shot. 20 seconds left to go here. If you're Drew Davis, you would like to pick up a quick two here. If you look, there's Davis back in on a shot. There's a quick two by Davis. Very quick two by Davis. Just talked about it. Got in on that single. Cut the corner on Riley. Picked up two. 12 seconds left to go. Davis is going to uh, ride the left side of Riley, and Riley would like to get that two back, or at least one back here, ankle, tight waist and near ankle, or far ankle by Davis. Riley tries to get to his feet, and it's gonna be a chop, tight waist, and Davis is gonna ride that last 12 seconds out. He's gonna take a lead, two to zero, after one. And let's see whose choice is going to be. It's going to be Davis' choice. He's going to defer over to Riley, and Riley will choose down. So, Jamie, that two for Davis and with short time was huge. Uh, it really was. You know, he, uh, he came out there and got that takedown late, late in that period, and that's, and that's what you got to do. You know, you don't like to give up those points, but if you can get them late in a period, uh, that, that's huge for a team. Right now, the Mustangs are doing a great job riding the Hawks. There's great hand control by Logan Riley as he splits the hands of Davis and gets back to his feet. <clears throat> There's Davis with a little hip toss of Riley. Riley's going to roll out of it. It's going to get two. Might get some back. Two and two. Four-point move by Drew Davis as he catches Riley in that hip toss. Score now is six to one in favor of the sophomore from Independence, uh, Drew Davis, and he's picking up, uh, he's doing a nice job 
with that hip toss from his feet. There's going to be a one-point escape. No, Davis drops back in on a single. He's got the right leg lifted up right at the knee. He's going to go to the head of Riley. He's going to slap Riley in a drive cradle. Riley has to go belly down. There's going to be some bad points right now by Davis. He's got a, he's got a drive cradle on Riley. Riley tried to roll through, and Davis stopped him. Davis is going to pick up at least three here. <clears throat> Going to get a takedown for two and going to pick up three near fall. Five point move, referee down looking close. Riley's trying to fight off his back here. Davis trying to work, work his way up on top. I don't think he can get the fall here. I don't think he can get the fall. Riley may pick up two on the reversal. He's going to get one on the escape. Five point move by Davis. One point escape by Riley. It's now nine to two, so uh, Independence is trying to get that four points back, Jamie. Yeah, they are, and you know, Logan Riley doing a good job. You know, he's, he, he's not tired. He, he's out there bouncing around, getting ready for uh, the next little flurry here, but he's, he's, he's not out of this match. You know, you saw what um, Evans did, Mitch Evans did against Patrick Woods. He just continued to slowly climb back into it, and that's what <coughs> Logan Riley has a chance to do here. That's the difference right there. Nice far side fireman's carry by Riley, Jamie. The difference there was Davis held Riley to his back, got the three. Davis right there was able to uh, bail out of the fireman's, not give up any back points. But it's 9-4 to four right now with 12 seconds left to go in the second period. And it's going to be Davis's choice to start the third. Sit out, turn in by Davis. T hard, tight waist by Riley. And he drives Davis back to the mat. And this period's going to end. But Davis, a great period for Drew Davis as he scores seven on Logan Riley. <coughs> That's a, you know, it's a five-point match, and they're going to go right to their feet as Davis is going to choose down. Riley's going to let him up right away here, and it's going to be 10-4 to four now. So Riley's going to go back to work, and you got to think something feet to back. There's a nice single by Davis. He's got that right leg or left leg of Riley. Riley with a hard whizzer on the right arm. Now front headlock by Logan Riley, and he's going to try to cut that corner on Davis. Front headlock, Davis is going to try to roll through, and he could have Riley on his back. Riley's going to get out of it, going to try to hit a go-behind. He's going to block off Davis. Davis hanging on, blocking off the hip, and Riley's going to pick up two. Two-point takedown by Logan Riley. Going to cut him loose again. Scores now 10-6, to six. he's going to cut Davis loose. We've got 124 left to go. 11-6 to six now. You're trying to trade two for one. You really got to get moving if you're Logan Riley. Drew Davis with a nice down block off of Riley double. Riley trying to knee slide, trying to get a little bit deeper in on that shot. Nice down block by Drew Davis. If you're Davis, he's got a hard quarter Nelson now on Riley. Could pick up two. That's a lot of pressure on the head of Logan Riley. Picks up two. Drew Davis picks up two. It's now 13 to six with one minute left to go. One of those swing matches right here. Last time these two wrestled, Davis was an 8-7 to seven winner, and this is one Coach Voss thought they could get on their side this time, but Drew Davis has something to say about it here, ladies and gentlemen, with a hard, hard ride. Spiral ride now, claw ride by Davis, short sit position by Riley, hand control by Riley, nice two-on-one now by Davis as he's got Riley back down to the map, 47 seconds left to go. Our dual meet score is 4-0 in favor of the West Delaware Hawks. But Independence is trying to match this right here, James. I'm surprised Davis isn't letting Riley up here to look for that major. Yeah, you're up seven points now. You know, an escape makes it uh, six points. So, you know, you, you would think, but he's looking for that cradle right now on Logan Riley with short time here. He just got 25 seconds left. So, uh, you know, he's, he's looking for those extra back points here. 20 seconds left to go. Davis draped on top of Riley with a hard cross face, looking for that cross face cradle. Logan Riley, no hand control there, no pulling off the cross face cradle. He's letting Davis ride that hard. Eight seconds left to go. I'll tell you what, Drew Davis has wrestled a whale of a match, Mustang fans. He's going to pick up a 13 to 6 decision on Logan Riley. That's going to get the uh, Mustang fans excited here as they pick up three in the first swing match. It's now four to three in favor of the Mustangs. Let's take a 30 second timeout. Stay with us. You're listening to wrestling right here on 94.7 KMCH. And welcome back to Independence. As we're back to action here, as we're up to weight class 126. And up for the Hawks of West Delaware is Sam Phillips. Sam Phillips, a senior. 
senior for the Hawks. He's 29 and four this season, career record of 80 and 18. He's taking on Tanner Erickson Dale, the freshman. He comes in here at 14 and 25. The last time these two wrestled at the Battle of Waterloo, it was a Phillips fall in 22 seconds. So well, Jamie, we're down to 17 seconds. So uh, Tanner, Tanner Erickson Dale has uh, has got a moral victory. At this point, he's went longer than 22 seconds on Phillips, but Sam Phillips with a nice nice uh, throw by takedown. He's got a cross-face cradle on Erickson Dell, and he's going to roll Dell to his back. Cross-face cradle. He's got the freshman on his back. Could be the first fall of the evening. There's the fall, 36 seconds. One by fall and 36. That's going to give the Hawks six. That'll put them up 10 to three. But Jamie, that was one of the favorite matches. The Hawks were favored in that match, and uh, um, Sam Phillips did exactly what he was expected to do. Yeah, he did, and you know that's what he, he came out here. He got the fall last time. He's got, he picked up the fall this time. So, and that, and that's what you got to do. And what uh, so a nice job there by Sam Phillips is we're going to move up. We're going to move up to weight class 132, and up for West Delaware is Connor Wickman. And Connor Wickman comes in here. He's a senior, 21 and 10. His, var his varsity career record, 66 and 51. And for the Mustangs, we've got Peyton Nolting. He is a freshman at 15 and 22. So uh, another one of those matchups where you think West Delaware uh, may be favored a little bit. Connor Wickman winning this match by fall in 48 seconds the last time these two wrestled. So. And Jamie, you know, that's, uh, like we said, the Hawks are going to be favored in some matches. You know, they, they've, uh, the matches that they favored, Patrick Woods, uh, Sam Phillips, Connor Wickman, you know, so far those guys have done what they uh, were set out to do. And there's a quick takedown by uh, Wickman with the front headlock on Nolteen. And he's going to drive Nolteen. He's got to he's drive cradle in on Nolteen. And Nolteen's going to latch on to that uh, left leg. Uh, Wickman now Wickman's going to put a far side half Nelson and try to curl Nolte up now drive cradle attempt near cradle by uh, Wickman he's going to curl that head around he's got the left leg hooked he's got Nolte going to his back we could have another quick fall here as Wickman is in great position right here referee down looking close Nolte trying to fight out of that drive cradle referee looking close in 45 seconds 45 second fall for Connor Wickman and West Delaware. That'll give the Hawks six more. It is now 16 to three. And uh, Jamie, uh, after just looking at comparatives after that, after those matches last time, it was 12 to three. But we did uh, see what happens. Plus another one. What's that? Plus plus five. Right. So whatever. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, one point. Twelve three seventeen. Yeah, 17. you're one point. All right. Another one of these outstanding matches coming up here. Bo Vasky. Bo Vasky is going to take on Luke House. Let's get the skinny on Luke House. I love that name, Jamie. That's a wrestling name, Luke House. He's a sophomore. Another one of those outstanding sophomores yeah, for Coach comes, Mike Doyle. He, he's 15 and 20, 22 on the season. His varsity record at Independence is 31 and 33 in his career for the West Delaware Hawks. Bo Vasky, he comes in here. He's 24 and 11 on the season and a career record of 42 and 33. As, you know, you gotta you gotta think. You know, West Delaware. House pin Vasky the last time these two wrestled, and uh, you know I think I think we're seeing a much better Bo Vasky than we did the last time these two teams wrestled at the Battle of Waterloo. Yeah, he's been in the finals of a couple of tournaments here lately, Jamie, and uh, you know wrestling with a lot of confidence. But I'm uh, this house is very physical for 138 pounder. He's dropped right in on that single on the right leg of Bo Vasky. Vasky with a hard down block. Now Vasky trying to lock up a cradle. He's got House in a cradle. If he can pull him back on. Might be a two-point takedown on the edge of the mat. Vasky now with the left leg of House. Might try to take him back on. That's a two-point takedown by Vasky on the edge of the mat. And that gets the orange and black faithful across the way up to their feet. I tell you what, what a great crowd to our right in the end zone. We've got the student section to the left 
Uh, I'll tell you what, the Independence Mustang fans are out in force. The Orange and Black faithful across the way. Uh, Jamie, it's a great crowd, great atmosphere, and uh, we're seeing some mighty fine wrestling so far. Yeah, we really are. And, you know, this is uh, these two schools, you know, they, they love wrestling. And they, both communities get involved, and they're very supportive when they come to these wrestling meets and they get right into it. And so, uh, you know, you just got to love these two schools love it when these two schools get together and it's always going to be a uh, it's always going to be a good duel and I tell you what, uh, what an atmosphere this is going to be all night here tonight as you know coming in after this you've got another rivalry Coe and Wartburg taking on Coe and so uh, just, a, just an outstanding night of uh, wrestling here tonight. Well you are exactly right Mr. Vasky after that stalemate we're back to action there's an inside stand-up by House. Vasky drops in on a single, lifts House up off the mat, takes him back down. Nice return, lift and return by Vasky. Goes back to work on a cross on a uh, tight waist with the left, head lever with the right, trying to work a chicken wing on that right side of Luke House. House very physical, one of those outstanding sophomores. Coach Doyle has a has a stable of outstanding sophomores that he's trying to build a championship team with. And I'm telling you what, uh, they are some good ones. 12 seconds left to go of the first period. Vasky up 2-0. to zero. This is one of those swing matches here. The uh, Mustang stole six last time from West Delaware here. And Vasky, Bo Vasky, the senior from West Delaware, is trying to uh, get a payback right here on the fine sophomore from Independence. We've got four seconds left to go in the first period. There's the whistle. Inside stand-up. There's a sit. Switch attempt by House. Vasky's going to... Vasky's going to attack that leg, try to get a turkey in, and that's a good first period by both wrestlers. Vasky up to a zero, and we're going to go neutral. Vasky going to go neutral on House. Jamie, what I've noticed so far is the Hawks, the Hawks want to wrestle on their feet, and uh, Independence is doing a nice job controlling the Hawks when they get up on top. Yeah, they really are, and you know... Uh what you got to do and that's going to be another takedown there for Bo Vasky. Nice job by him uh, you know coming out and, and getting another takedown. You know like you said uh, Independence got six from West Delaware the last time these two teams wrestled so uh, you know the Hawks would really like to uh, get, well, coach, get this one back. That Coach Doyle would like to duplicate the feet there and uh, the Hawks would uh, like, to, like to say something about it. This is one of those swing matches if there's a swing match in this duel here it is early 16 to 3 is our dual meet score in favor of the West Delaware Hawks. We started at weight class 113 with Patrick Woods. We're at weight class 138 now with the senior from West Delaware, Bo Vasky. Hard cross face by Vasky. He's going to try to set up a cross face cradle on House. House is doing a nice job with hand control, peeling that cross face off. Vasky steps over that right ankle of House. Now goes back to work on a tight waist and a head lever. Vasky doing a great job controlling House, keeping his hips flat down, buried to the mat. House now with a little hand control. Vasky goes to work with the chop on the left arm. Reaches through with the right, trying to set up a ball and chain on House. 55 seconds left to go. Second period. House belly down off right center of the mat. Vasky doing a nice job. Now bar arm by Vasky. He's got the right arm out to a bar arm. He's got House posted to the mat. House trying to get his chest up. Vasky with the bar across the arm. Now he loses the bar. Now he goes to a chicken wing on the right. And we're going to get warning against House for laying around. That's going to be one point for Vasky. Stalling call on Luke House. So our referee wanted to make these guys work hard tonight. And, uh, you know, Jamie, I don't know if that was stalling on House. Uh, Vasky's doing just a fine job of riding, uh, working some pinning combinations. Yeah, it really is. And House is doing what he can to fight this stuff off. And uh, Vasky looking to turn House to his back here. Is pick up some near fall points as our towel boy is out. That 15 seconds left to go. Or, excuse me. And that's going to do it for the second period. Vasky in solid period. Picks up a stalling and a takedown. He goes up 5-0. And it's going to be House's choice. And he's going to ride on top. The Mustangs, no hesitation there, Jamie. They want to ride the Hawks tonight. Yeah, they really do. And that's uh, that's where they're tough. They get on top and they're going to throw the legs in. And uh, they're going to they're gonna make things difficult for the Hawks on top. And uh, that's what... Uh, that's what Coach Doyle, that's what the Mustangs have playing tonight. Nice job by Bo Vasky getting right up to his feet. And that's and, and you can make a lot of things happen when you get to your feet like that. Well, he's got a neck wrench on House. He picked up a two reversal. That might have been a little early on the reversal there, Jamie, but he'll take it. 
almost had the double spur in on House and the neck wrench. House did a fine job going belly down, but Vasquez's going to pick up the two-point reversal, and now Jamie it's 7-0. And now well, Vasquez, you got to be thinking bonus points. He, he is going to be thinking bonus points as he's going to let House loose and he's going to dive back in on a single and uh, going to go out of bounds. But a nice job by Bo Vasquez trying to build on that lead here and not sit. Well, this could be the 10-point swing that the West Delaware Hawks are looking for. Back to neutral position. We got 123 left to go in the match. The young sophomore from Independence hasn't found a way to dent the armor of Bo Vasky, and that's going to be a snap and spin for Bat Vasky in a two-point takedown. He's up now 9-1 with a major with 110 left to go, and he's looking for a chicken wing on the right side of the sophomore. We're going to get stalling against House again, and one more for one more for Vasky. So uh, Vasky with that chicken wing on the right side now of House, inside wrist on the left, trying to apply a little pressure forward. House doing a nice job blocking off the hips of Vasky. Vasky trying to set up the double chicken wing. He's got a half Nelson on the left now, chicken wing on the right. House, House playing footsie, and we're gonna get potentially dangerous. House playing footsie there with Bo Vasky blocking off his legs, Jamie. Bo Vasky tried to get off to the side, and House used his feet to block Vasky off so he couldn't get his hips out to turn him. Yeah, and then, you know, he, he's kind of slipped that wing out at the last second, did House, and um, got the potential danger, potentially dangerous calls. So 10-1 lead here for Vasky with uh, 35 seconds left to go in the match. And this could be the uh, this could be the win that the Hawks were looking for. And uh, Coach Joel, you know, he would have liked a repeat, but, you know, we saw there's going to be stalling against House again. It's going to be two points for Vasky here. 21 seconds left to go. <clears throat> 21 seconds left to go. Vasky now 12 to 1. A turn here. And we're going to get a stalemate right there. Inside wrist for Vasky. 13 seconds left. And you just got to keep riding him, I think, Jamie. Now <clears throat> you're going to let him up. Okay, now you know. Let him might, up. You might think he's looking for something feet to back here if you're Bo Vasky with 10 seconds left. Yeah, and you got to be careful right here that you, uh, if you're Bo Vasky, that's going to be a two point takedown by Bo Vasky. That's his fourth takedown. Ooh. He's going to win this match. He's going to win that match 14 to 1, Jamie. It's a 10 point swing. And uh, that could be the, that could be the uh, win that the Hawks were looking for. That's and, four. And looking at it, you and I coming into this dual meet tonight, we said that 138 pound match could be, uh, could be a key match in this dual meet. You know, West Delaware gave up a fall there. Uh, Bo Vasky has wrestled much better since then, so uh, you know this is this is this is that's kind of what the Hawks needed. They needed some momentum coming back in here as uh, we are on KMCH tonight, also on the World Wide Web at KMCH.com. Say hello to everyone listening tonight. Uh, Hiawatha, Waterloo, Seminole, Florida, West Des Moines. I know that's probably Kalen Lenz. He called tonight, said he was going to be listening on KMCH.com in West Des Moines, Hazleton, Cedar Falls, Mount Vernon, Greeley. Fort Dodge, Cedar Falls, Castile, New York, and Des Moines. Also another one in Des Moines, Iowa. So we appreciate everybody tuning in and listening to us here tonight on KMCH and KMCH.com as we move up to weight class 145 for Independence. You're going to have the junior 36-0, and 119-8 and in his career. It's Chase Straw from Independence. And for West Delaware, we've got Timmy Tutton. He is a senior at for West Delaware, 17 and 15 is his season record, total varsity record of 39 and 38 for Timmy Tutton. But I tell you what, you're going up against the top ranked kid in the state in Chase Straw, and, and well deserved for Chase Straw. Well, you just got to come out here and wrestle tough if you're Timmy Tutton. Yeah, he doesn't have a weakness, Jamie. We've re we've seen him wrestle several times. He's wrestled the best, and he doesn't have a weakness. He's good on the, on his feet. He's very tough on the bottom with hand control, and he's very tough riding. And we're seeing a little bit of that right now with a nice high crotch on Tim Tutton. He's going to lift that up, cut across to a double, and that's going to be a two-point takedown for Straw. You know, if you're Tim Tutton right here, Jamie, you've got to keep wrestling, you know, and trade. Make Straw trade two for one. You know, keep it close. You know, Tim Tutton's in great shape, but Chase Straw is also. And you want to play the, you want to play the two for one game. Yeah, you really do. If that's, if that's what you do here, if you're Timmy Tutton, just uh, try to avoid going to your back here. You know, do kind of 
um, you know, do what Mitch Evans did. Obviously, Mitch Evans came back and uh, gave Patrick Woods everything he wanted, but he didn't get pinned. And, and you know, the same thing um, at a couple other weights, you know, that last one. Uh, Luke House didn't give up the fall. That's what you got to try to do here, try to save a point somewhere. And there's a nice two-point tilt there, a three-point tilt there by Chase Straws. He chopped the left arm. He chopped the left arm of Tim Tutton, went to a tight waist, loaded Tutton up on his hip, got the three-point uh, near fall, got the five count off of it. Now comes Straw with a hard cross face, trying to set up that cradle. Tutton latches on to the right leg of Straw. Straw's going to carry himself back behind. He's got a cross face cradle on Tim Tutton. Tutton trying to make himself big and long, and Straw's going to try to roll through across his back. Tutton based out. Now Straw's going to try to take Tutton back. Tutton's got to peel that cross face off as Chase Straw has that in deep. I'm telling you what, if you've ever had a cross face cradling like that, that deep, that hard, that strong, it doesn't feel very good. And Tim Tutton is fighting like crazy with 18 seconds left to go. He's fighting like crazy not to give up three more here. Chase Straw would like to flip Tutton on his back and pick up the early fall. Eight seconds left to go, and the senior from West Delaware may survive to go another period. Might be a two-point reversal. Two-point reversal by Tutton. And I think we're gonna get a we're gonna get a two one one point escape for Tutton. Straw tried to roll Tutton through. Tutton cleared that arm, Jamie, and Chase Straw almost found himself on his back. Yeah, he really did. And that was a nice job there by uh, Timmy to just make something happen. And that's what you gotta do here in these dual meets is just uh, create that motion and try to con you know just try to catch your opponent off guard. And that's what Timmy Tutton tried to do there with Chase Straw. Well, it's going to be Straw's choice, and he's going to choose down to start this second period. Chase Straw, Chase Straw down, and Tim Tutton's going to ride, ride that left side. There's an inside stand-up by Straw. Tim Tutton reaches down, grabs the right leg, lifts the right leg up, tries to set up a Turk on Straw. Straw's going to get his hips up and try to pull himself around. Tutton maintains control of the right leg of Chase Straw. We may, get a, we may get a stalemate right here for Tim Tutton. That's what you're looking for. For Chase Straw, you're looking for a two-point reversal. Tutton maintaining control of the right leg of Straw. Straw's going to step over the, the right leg of Tutton. Now he's got a power half Nelson on the left side of Tutton. Tutton still controlling that right leg. And we're going to get a stalemate right there. And Straw's going to go back down. 121 left to go. Second period. Tim Tutton wrestling a well of a match so far, Jamie. Yeah, he really is. And, you know, just trying to stay in it. He's down by four here and with a minute 15 left to go in the second. So, you know, doing a great job and just kind of trying to fight off this flurry here by Chase Straw. And uh, right below us are, uh, I think, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Straw. Saw Chase come up and talk to him in between the JV and JV and varsity meet. There's a two-point takedown by Straws. He got in deep. That's a short arm drag. He's really good with that short arm drag and then attacking that double. And once he gets in on that double, I'm telling you what, uh, he is very, very physical. He's going to cut Tutton loose. And again, Jamie, uh, it's 8-3 to three right now. Again, we talked about that. Tim Tutton uh, trading two for one. We'll keep this match close. There's a long shot by Tutton. A reshot now by... Straws, he's in deep on the single. Hard whizzer by Tutton. Right on the edge of the mat. And there's a two-point takedown by Straws. He kept driving that across, Jamie. Tim Tutton, there was no hip pressure by Tutton. He let go of the whizzer, and that gave Straw the two-point takedown. Yeah, an easy two-point takedown there. You let go of that hip pressure like that, and uh, um, it, it's, it's pretty tough to, to defend a takedown after that happens. Well, it's 10-2 to two right now. Chase Straw working on a major decision right now. And you know he's looking for more. 27 seconds left. Short sit out by Tutton. Straw staying tight behind underneath both arms. Tutton trying to come to a stand up, trying to work some hand control. Straw now with the tight waist with the right. He's got the left arm of Tim Tutton controlled. Might see another tight waist tilt here with 13 seconds left. Straw trying to load up that tilt. He's got uh, Tutton on his back. Will not get the fall, but he's going to pick up another three point near fall. It's going to be 13. To two after the second period. Good period by the top ranked 145 pounder class 2A Chase Astraw. <clears throat> Tutton's choice. A little indecision. He's going to go down, Jamie. A little indecision by, uh, by uh, Tim Tutton and the coaching staff there for West Delaware. Uh, they weren't sure where they wanted him to go. 
And uh, they're going to put him back underneath Straw. Or Straw is just so physical on top. And you can see Tim Tutton in that short sit position right now. <clears throat> I might have put him back on his feet, tried to burn some clock up, up, up top. You're either going to give two for a takedown or two on the near fall. You know, pick your poison right there. But, uh, you know, you and I aren't coaching right now. We're just up here observing. That's right. Now we're going to get stalling warning against Tutton. So again, that, to two, that's minute 30 left to go. That straw riding that hard inside wrist is looking for that tilt again. You know, Jamie, that's hard. You're underneath there. Straw's, straw's applying all that forward pressure. He's got his right shoulder buried right between the shoulder blades of Tim Tutton. Tutton now with the one point escape back to his feet, 13 to 3. Now, we'll see, if, uh, see if Chase Straw can go back to work on that short drag. He's so quick. There's that sweep single by Straw. Tim Tutton squares up. Now Tim Tutton controlling both wrists. The straw short drag by Straw. He's in deep. Cuts across to a double. There's a two-point takedown by Straw. His fourth takedown of this match is now 15 to three. And Straw is thinking about a tech fall right now. 15 to four now as Tutton picks up an escape. 51 seconds left to go. And you're gonna get stalling against Tutton. Oh boy. I mean they just got to up, their feet. He's gonna pick up another uh, Point for warning, Tim Tutton makes a cardinal mistake there as, as Straw drops in on a double. Tutton goes to an underhook, and there's going to be a one-point escape. Straw with the two-point takedown, and one-point escape by Tutton. you got 28 seconds left to go, and it's 18-5. to five. The next takedown, this is over. Yeah, if you're Timmy Tutton, you got to try to fight it off here, but you also you, you can't give up a... Uh, you don't want to give up a stalling point here if you're Timmy Tutton. <coughs> And that's going to be two, and that's going to do it. That's going to be 20 to 5, and the match is going to be over right there, Jamie. 20 to 5, technical fall by top ranked Chase Straw. That's going to give the Independence Mustangs five. And it's after uh, weight class 145, it's going to be 20 to 8, still in favor of the West Delaware Hawks. As we're going to move up to weight class 160. Have an update here at halftime. Number four, North Lynn, leads the girls' game 24 to 11 over number 15, Makoka Valley tonight in Troy Mills. So, as we move up to weight class 152, this will be our last match before we'll have a 10-minute break, uh, an intermission for the television. So, we'll uh, we'll do this match and then we'll have a short break before we get you going with the rest of the action. It's Jake Jewel. This is Jake Jewel for the Independence Mustangs. He comes in with a 27 and 13 record, uh, Jamie. And uh, Jake Jewel is one of those, another one of those tough sophomores. And he's in quickly on a sweep single on Max Ridenour, and he's got Ridenour's leg up in the air. Nice front trip and he picks up a two-point takedown right there. So Jake Jewell off to a quick start on the, uh, on the, on the good sophomore there, Max Ridenauer for West Delaware. Jewell's going to cut uh, Ridenauer loose here, and that's going to be a one-point escape. So Max Ridenauer. Again, we've seen Max Ridenauer wrestle very well at times. Well, we've also seen him you know, get a little intimidated by, by wrestlers that are physical, so he's really going to have to... Uh, he's going to have to... Uh, He's got to stiffen up here a little bit, bow that neck, so to speak, and he's going to have to stand in there and fight. Jake Jewell with another two-point takedown, making it look easy. Well, I know the last time these two teams wrestled, you know, uh, Timmy Tutton wrestled Elliot Ryan in this match and gave up a decision. So, uh, you know, this is going to be, like you said, it's going to have to be one where Max Ridenauer really steps up and comes up to the forefront here and does something, uh, something big for the Hawks. Yeah, and it's more, it's more about, uh, you know, you, you're not going to be favored here if you're Max Ridenauer. But, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to go out there and take a dive on the mat. You've still got to, still got to put the, everything forward. And if you're Jake Jewell, you know, your goal is to go out there and dominate. And that's what he's doing so far. He's up 4-1, to 4-1 one, to one with 51 seconds left to go here. And he's very, very physical. I'm telling you what, Jamie, these Mustangs, uh, for the next couple of years, they are going to be uh, they are in great shape to have one of those outstanding teams with the sophomores they have in their lineup. There's a nice stand-up by Ridenauer as he splits the hands of, of Jewel and picks up one point escape. He cuts the gap now to, he cuts the gap now to, to a two. And there's that cattle catcher by Jewel as he snapped Ridenauer's head down. 
and went underneath and over and had Reidenauer going to his back, but Reidenauer found the edge of the mat there. So if you're Max Reidenauer, you got to stay, stay on the head. And there's a nice double by Jewel. He's in deep. He's got Reidenauer lifted up off the mat. Reidenauer is going to try to reach back and grab that ankle. <clears throat> Reidenauer makes a costly mistake. With 12 seconds left to go, Jewel has right now in the drive cradle. Right now, trying to rock back and forth out of it. Anytime you, re anytime you reach back, there's a fall. That's huge right there for the Mustangs. They're going to pick up a fall in 157. Jake Jewel wins by fall in 157. Tell you what, that, uh, that's just exactly that's what the Mustangs needed score. right there. Yeah, it was, and now we're going to take a... Uh, I believe we're going to have a break here. That was seven minutes, seven matches. We're going to take a short break here, and we will come back. We'll recap what we've got so far as West Delaware leads this duel 20 to 14. After seven matches, we'll be back with the next seven or six, excuse me, right after this. You're listening to High School Wrestling from KMCH Sports. And welcome back here to Independence High School as West Delaware and Independence going at it 20 to 14. West Delaware leads it here as we started at weight class 113. Patrick Woods put the Hawks on the board with a 4-0 major de decision over Mitch Evans from Independence. The Mustangs, or excuse me, Logan Riley, then was beaten by Drew Davis 13-6 at weight class 120. That made it 4-3 in favor of the Hawks. Sam Phillips with a 36-second fall over Tanner Erickson Dale at 126 pounds. At 132, it was Connor Wickman with a 46-second fall over Peyton Olting. At 138, Bo Vasky with a 14-1 major decision over Luke House. That was followed by a Chase Straw, ranked number one in the state as a junior. A 20-5 technical fall over Timmy Tut. That made it 20-8. And Jake Jewell from Independence picking up a fall for the Mustangs. The, the sophomore Jewell gets the fall to make our team score 20. 214 as we get you set for the second half of this dual meet and Roger uh, we've kind of looked at it here in the break it, it, looking at what the way things went at the Battle of Waterloo looking at things to come here it's uh, it's going to come right down to the wire well that, you're exactly right and uh, you know the, the, the looking at these next matches uh, the Hawks are going to be favored in the next two and then you got one two three you got four matches left and there are two that the uh, Independence Mustangs are favored in, and there's two toss-ups. And you're right; it's going to come down to it's going to come down to who's ever hot. And somebody's going to have to upset somebody. Somebody's going to have to rustle lights out. Jamie, you see some body language by Coach Voss over there. You know, uh, he's a competitor, and uh, he's just thinking he he's looking for more fight out of his kids. You know, he's thinking about that. I'll be anxious to hear your interview with him. Uh, Coach's corner. He's looking for more fight because it's going to make take more fight on Saturday to win that Walmac. Coach Doyle, on the other hand, he's talking to his kids. He said, hey, we're in great shape. We're in the position we want to be. Now let's go out the second half and let's get the job done. Let's win it. Let's take that trophy back. Let's make a statement right here. The Mustangs are looking for the Buck, <clears throat> or Dell Buck Trophy for the first time since they started. We've got Jake Voss and Nick Holt coming up for you in just a little bit. You're listening to High School Wrestling on Mix 94.7 KNCH. Delaware, ladies and gentlemen, they call him Chief. Not a Ryan, a senior. This is Jake Voss. His opponent for Independence with a record of 28 and 8. This is going to be a battle for Independence and sophomore. Let's welcome him home. Meet the Mattel. And that was our PA announcer, Scott Casper, tonight as he gets this lineup coming up. As we mentioned, Jake Voss and Nicholas Holt coming your way right now. Jake Voss comes into this match. He is a senior with a record of 30 and three, losing another match. He lost this last weekend to Drew Foster from Minneapolis. He's 30 and three, ranked number one in the state in class 2A. He will be taking on from Independence, Nicholas Holt who is a sophomore at 28 and eight. Another sophomore from the, another tough sophomore from the Mustangs. Now this is a very physical sophomore, Jamie. And uh, I'll tell you what, looking at, looking at his stats uh, on the course of the year, uh, we've got his pin total here. 
he's just a, he's just very very solid. And uh, Jake Voss with the front headlock is going to pick up two. That's going to be the experience of Jake Voss. Last time these two wrestled was a ten to one major decision by Voss. And you know Voss would like nothing more than to throw. Uh, uh, throw Nick Holt to his back, score the fall, and Holt would like to get a little payback here, uh, taking on the number one ranked boss. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Jamie, we're going to see these. We're going to see several of these rematches Saturday in the finals of that Wall Mac. And I'm telling you what, that thing is going to be. It's going to be a barn burner from the first whistle to the last whistle. And uh, you and I are going to be there, and it's going to be right back here in the Independence Gym. Absolutely. Jake Boss comes into tonight. 18 pins on the season. He's got one tech fall, five major decisions. So uh, most of the time, Jake Foss gets a win. It's by fall, and the Hawks need him to get another one here. And he can score bonus points, and that's exactly that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to get a stall in against Holt right now as Voss is applying a lot of pressure. There's a throw by by Voss. He's going to pick up takedown number two, and he's got Holt, Holt belly down. Now he's going to cut him loose again. And that's where uh, Jake Voss is, his toughest right there. A one-point escape by Holt. Holt dives back in on the legs of Voss, and Voss has to make sure, Jamie, when you cut somebody loose, get rid of them, push them away. That was almost a good move by Holt there to get right back in on the low single of Voss. Absolutely, and that's what you got to do. You don't want to, you don't want to just relax and uh, give up, get the escape. You got an opportunity to get right back in on a single leg and get or try to pick up a takedown of your own. And there's uh, Voss now with another takedown. 26 seconds left to go, and he's up six to two. And, uh, and we're going to get stalling against Holt already, Jamie. Another, that's another stalling for Holt. That's going to be one point for Voss. It's 7 to 2. I'll tell you what, you've got two state meet officials here. You better be ready to wrestle or they're going to ding you. They're going to make you wrestle. And if you're not ready to wrestle, they're going to call that stalling. And, and, uh, and I'm guessing not just two state meet officials, but uh, if they're doing the second duel, they're NCAA officials as well. So uh, good officiating crew here tonight. All right, it's going to be Voss's choice. He's going to defer. No, it's going to be Holt's choice. He's going to defer over to Voss. And Voss is going to choose down to try to pick up that point first. Voss up 7-2, to two, courtesy of three nice takedowns and a penalty point for Holt stalling. Holt's going to ride the left side of Voss, try to cast himself over to the right side. Voss with a nice stand-up. He's going to split the hands of Holt, pick up an escape, and right now it's 8-2. to two. Voss goes right back to work. I don't think there's anybody around that works the head as physical as Jake Voss and uh, Jamie he just sometimes that gets him in trouble because it's straight line pressure and he snaps that head down we've seen him sometimes snap people right down into his legs but uh, we've seen that pay off for him in many many matches as he just wears on his opponent's head and, and that's what you do and then you, you talk about uh, you want to try to break your opponent and that's what Jake Voss tries to do when he comes out and goes on to the mat there's a long single by Holt and a, and a go behind by Voss and Voss is going to pick up an next one and, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, head coach Jeff Voss out of his chair offering some encouragement to his uh, senior, it's 10 to 2 now, Voss working on a major but you know Jamie, he's thinking extra right now trying to set up that bulldog, that ball and chain that he's so good at, he's got an inside wrist on the right side of Holt and Holt belly down, might get another stalling call, Voss doing a good job getting off the legs out to the side Holt playing uh, Playing on all fours, basing out. Voss with a double inside wrist now. 53 seconds left to go. An inside wrist now on the left. Voss gets out to the left side, tries that Syracuse ride. And I'll tell you what, he's got, uh, he's got a Holt belly down. Hold up to all fours now. Hard, tight waist by Voss. Voss trying to set up a tilt. And uh, Jamie, who's stalling right here now? Jake Voss is trying to get some arm control and Holt. Holt's in pretty good defensive position right now. Yeah, he, he is. And, you know, Jake Voss, that's something he's got to do is they're going to give up another one right there is Voss working those chicken wings. And, uh, you know, Jake Voss, has that, he's got that ball and chain series that he likes to work and, is, and just isn't able to get it right now because, uh, you know, as, as the official just said, Holt doing some stalling on the bottom and not able, uh, not really coming up and get, trying to work for those points. Now Voss is, uh, Voss is out with that Syracuse, that inside ride, inside wrist ride. He's got his right shoulder buried between the uh, scapulas of Nick Holt. And it's going to be Holt's choice to start the third. And let's see where he decides to go. I'm, I think he's probably going to go down or up. No, he's going to go up on top. So once again, Coach Mike Doyle putting his wrestlers up on top, trying to ride these West Delaware Hawks out. The Hawks up 20-14 to 14 if you're just joining us. 
Nice stand-up inside stand-up by Jake Voss. He's going to cut the hands, put the hands of Holt. Holt with a back trip on Voss. Voss right back up with an inside, inside stand-up. Holt trying to hit a cross-face cradle on Voss. Voss does a nice job splitting the hands of Holt. Holt drops in on a single. He's got the right leg of Jake Voss picked up off the mat. Voss with a hard wizard. We're going to get a stalemate. And back down again we go. As Holt was content to latch on, to squeeze onto that right leg of Jake Voss. And Voss not able to uh, split the hands of Holt. 139 left to go. Inside stand up by Voss. He picks up one. Holt dives in on a double. And Voss with a nice down block. Might be a go behind attempt by Voss. Holt head down, buried in the mat, but he's driving his knees forward. We're going to get a stalemate. Jake Voss up, hustles back to the center of the mat. Holt gets up just a little bit slow. Our score is 12 to 2. Jamie, we're in the third period with 127 left to go for Jake Voss. You, you got to be thinking tech fall here or more bonus points. Another takedown by Voss. That's number five. We'll see if he cuts him up. Cuts him again. 117 is going to cut Holt. It's going to be 14 to 3. Holt dives in on Voss. Voss with an opportunity for a go behind. One point escape by Holt. Holt tries to dive in on Voss. Voss now with the front headlock. He's going to hit a go behind. There's another takedown by Voss. That's takedown number six. 16 to 3. Voss is going to cut Holt again. 57 seconds left to go. Holt picks up the escape. Voss with the go behind. There's the two points. I'd say Voss has Nick Holt broken now, Jamie. Might be an opportunity to throw him to his back. <clears throat> Voss trying to hit a go behind on Holt. It's 18 to 5 right now. Holt hanging on to the right leg, the left leg of Jake Voss. Probably going to get a stalemate right there, maybe. 33 seconds left to go. Voss is going to try to split the hands of Holt, pick up the two, and that's going to be a 25 tech fall by Jake Voss with another takedown. 20 to 5. That's going to give the Hawks 5. That's a 25 now to 14 lead. But Jamie, you know, that might not be enough. It may not. You know, you were that opportunity there, you know, you had Nicholas Holt broke and uh, like to see him get a fall there. So we're going to move up to weight class 170. We'll hear again from our PA, PA announcer tonight, Scott Casper. Up, ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 170 pounders. First for West Delaware, they call him Big Rig. A season record going of 28 and 3, 16 and 21 overall. Ladies and gentlemen, from Manchester, a junior, Frank Miller. His opponent from Independence, an overall record of 88 and 64. He's a fighter and a battler. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man is a 25 on the record going on the year. He's a senior for Independence, Zach Brenner. Well, you heard it right there. We've got Brent Lammers from West Delaware, the junior. Comes in here with a 28 and three record for Independence. It's Zach Kramer, he's a senior with a 25 and 11 record the last time these two wrestled. It was a Brent Lammers 5-0 victory at the Battle of Waterloo. I don't believe these two wrestled at the uh, Benton Community Tournament as Lammers, the junior, has had an, a great cut last couple weeks. As uh, Last week he defeated, I believe, top-ranked Adam Drain from uh, Minneapolis in the finals of the Louisa Muscatine tournament. So a nice job there by Brett Lammers. These two did wrestle at Bent Community. Lammers picked up a fall in 425, and I believe that was a defensive fall he got at the Bent Community invite. So uh, Hawks would love another fall here. The Mustangs just looking for a win here. Yeah, and Zach Kramer, very tough here, Jamie. Two seniors, or senior Zach Kramer. You know, this is the last time he's going to wrestle in that. He's never won this duel. He's never been a part of carrying that Buckdell Trophy off the mat. And he would like nothing more than to, to get the, uh, get the uh, win here, get a, get, a, uh, 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 get a payback match here, a payback win. There's a nice shot by Lammers. He's in, and he's going to try to drop Kramer. And Kramer does a nice job off the edge of the mat and uh, right, into, uh, right into our scores table, right into our KCRG. 9.2 people and they had to scurry off the mat there right through the cheerleaders right into the score table and you got two thoroughbreds going at it right here and 38 seconds left to go very physical is Zach Kramer and very physical is Brett Lammers and uh, this is going to be one of those outstanding matches here 
<clears throat> Lambert's in a staggered stance, leading with that right leg. And Kramer in a staggered stance, leading with his right leg also. So uh, uh, two, two uh, wrestlers that are very similar in styles, very similar in builds. <clears throat> and uh, they're going at it. 14 seconds left to go. Lambert's in on another shot. Single. Let's see if he can turn that into, some sh into two. He's trying to lift that right leg of Zach Kramer up off the mat. Lambert's have has Kramer up. He's going to pick up two. That was a nice lift and return by Brett Lammers, Jamie. Yeah, it was. And, you know, right there at the at that buzzer there, Lammers picks up the takedown and gets the two-point lead as we go into the second period. No, that was a lot. That was a strength move right there. He got his hips in. He stayed with the shot, got his hips in underneath. He lifted, and then he, he, he brought uh, uh, Kramer down, snapped him down, and covered the hips. Did a nice job. <clears throat> There's a sit-out uh, switch attempt. I'll tell you what, Lammers is tough in this position as he picks up that inside leg of Kramer, scoops the right one, tries to set up a Turk on Kramer. Kramer has to scissor his legs, crawl forward, and cover that up. And uh, Lammers goes back to work with an inside wrist on the left. Spiral ride now. He switches over to the right side, picks up an ankle on Kramer. 132 left to go. If you're just joining us, the Hawks are up 25 to 14. But I'm telling you what, there's a lot of wrestling left. And uh, the Independence Mustangs have some, uh, have some guns left in the top weights here. 118 left to go. Lambert's hanging on to that 2-0 lead and riding Kramer. It was Lambert's choice. He deferred over to Kramer. We might see these two in the finals. I tell you, Jamie, this 170-pound weight class is going to be a, a dogfight at the Womack. This could be a semifinal round match again um, um, uh, Friday after Saturday afternoon, 48 hours from now. And, you know, uh, we could see these two going at it again uh, to get into the finals. Absolutely. And, you know, this would uh, be another tough matchup is uh, these two have wrestled twice. Lammers has gotten uh, has gotten both victories, but Kramer is uh, he's no slouch, that's for sure. You know, he's a senior. He's wrestled a lot of matches for Coach Doyle. And, uh, uh, again, like we said, he'd like nothing more than to pull a big upset here and uh, – Give the Independence Mustang some excitement. Brent Lammers with a cross body ride in, and he's going to get himself high. Brent Lammers is not very good in this position. Kramer now scooping that left leg of Brent Lammers, and he might pick up a two-point reversal here. To Brent Lammers, you got to bail out of this, Jamie, I think, and give up the two. Brent Lammers is hanging on for dear life. Kramer's trying to get his hips up. Lammers is in a precarious position. We've got to get a stalemate right there. Boy, oh boy, a referee saved by the whistle. The referee called a stalemate. Brett Lammers very uncomfortable with that cross body right in. Yeah, he is, and, you know, he's got to, he's got to figure it out here. Is, uh, you know, Kramer doing a good job, uh, you know, coming up and not letting Brent get what he wants on top. And so if you're Brent Lammers, you gotta, you got to get back to basics here and what you like to do on top. 14 seconds left to go. Lammers doing a nice job controlling the wrist. Great hand control underneath by Zach Kramer as he splits the hands of uh, Lammers. Lammers latch, latches on. He's got a butcher on Kramer. He's trying to uh, throw Kramer to his back. He's got the left shoulder posted, and he's going to run out of time as that's the end of the second period. And it's going to be Lammer's choice. He's going to go down to start the two, or to start the third, hanging on to a very slim 2-0 lead, courtesy of that first period takedown. Well, if you're Zach Kramer, you got to look for a pinning combination. If you're Brent Lammer's, you got to work some hand control and get up. And uh, tell you what, it's anybody's match here to start this third period. Tripod stand up by Brent Lammers. Nice spiral ride by Kramer. Could see a cross face cradle coming right here. Kramer trying to lock up a cross face cradle. And we've seen the Mustangs be very successful with their cradle series tonight. We saw that in the JV action. We're seeing it now here in the varsity action as the Mustangs have, have uh, latched onto a couple of cradles. And uh, that has caused the West Delaware Hawks some uncomfortable uncomfortableness. Now Brent Lammers up on, uh, might get a stalling call on Lammers for basing out. There's there's a nice job by Kramer. He's going to lock up that cross-face cradle. Lammers has to reach over and split the hands of Kramer. Kramer has the cradle locked up on Lammers. 109 left to go, and Lammers fights out of it one more time. But I tell you what, Jamie, Kramer's doing a great job with that cross-face, and Lammers is not reaching up and pulling that off. He's letting Zach Kramer control his whole upper body with that hard cross-face. you got to come up here if you're Brent Lammers. You're gonna, the stalling warnings are going to keep coming if you don't come up to your start building the base here. Man, you can't hang on to it. If you're Brent Lammers, you can't hang on to a 2-0 lead right now. Now if you're Zach Kramer. <clears throat> if you're Zach Kramer here right now, 
you got to keep working those cross faces. There's going to be Starley on Lammers and one point on Kramer. And Coach Voss, up, Coach Voss up out of his chair. Coach Voss just livid. Coach Voss just livid. Coach Voss just livid, and he's going he's gonna to come to the scores table with our assistant referee. And uh, he's going to question that call there. As Kramer was up on top, Kramer was up on top, and he had a high thigh ride. He had a high thigh ride on Brett Lammers. And we're going to get a bench warning. You know, that's, you can't, you can, you can ask for a rule clarification, Jamie, but you can't question the judgment call. That was a judgment call, so you get a warning. So now you got to kind of, you got to confine yourself now. There's Lammers with a hard switch on Kramer. He might pick up two. Hard switch. Lammers is going to try to hip heist out of it. Re-switch by Kramer. Lammers is going to pick up a two-point reversal. Nine seconds left. And it's going to be a four-to-one lead now for Lammers. And he's got to hang on for dear life. Zach Kramer is trying to work himself out of it. And it's going to be a Brett Lammers four-to-one win for West Delaware. Tell you what, that was, uh, that was hard right there. That was exactly hard. That was a hard win for Brett Lammers. Great match by the senior from independent Zach Kramer. He did everything he could, Jamie. He had that cradle locked up, and he just couldn't quite dump Lammers on his back with it. Yeah, he couldn't, and it was right there. And, you know, nice job by Brent Lammers, you know. Russell. His opponent from Independence at 182 pounds, a season record of 35 and 1. That's good enough for a number three ranking in the state of Iowa. He's a senior. Welcome, Kyle As we had it there, Scott Casper, our PA announcer, <coughs> with the call there, we've got Coy Russell <coughs> from West Delaware as he's taking on a sophomore, Coy Russell from West Delaware. His record this season, 17 and 14. He's taken on the senior from Independence, Kyle Fank. Fank, a senior, a 35 and one record, 119 and 34 career record at Independence. And that's a quick takedown for Fank as he goes up two to nothing here. Shortly or early in this match, the last time these two wrestled in the duel at the Battle of Waterloo it was a Kyle Fank fall in three minutes and 32 seconds. So Coy Russell gonna have to try to do what he can not to give up another one here tonight. Yeah, Jamie, you know, uh, the Hawks have doubled up the Mustangs right now, but in these next four, in these next four weights, 182, 195, 220, 285, you know, the, uh, you gotta give the edge to Independence here. Uh, they are stronger in their upper row eights than West Delaware is, and it's gonna take, uh, for West Delaware to win this duel, it's gonna take something uh, huge from one of these last four, because the Hawks are gonna give up six at 106. So uh, conceivably the score right now is 28 to 20 with West Delaware in the lead. Kyle Fank up on top now. He's got the cross body right in. And I'm telling you what, he is tough. His leverage, <clears throat> he is absolutely tough on top. As he's got his cross body right in on the left of Coy Russell. And he goes to cross face to far shoulder. And he dumps Russell on his back and picks up three. So he goes up now 5-0. And he's looking for some more right here. He just has a tremendous amount of leverage. He's got a power half Nelson in right now, Coy Russell. Coy Russell's got to try to keep those elbows down, but I'm telling you what, that's easier said than done. Fank up on top, riding, riding, that, uh, <clears throat> riding that cross body with the left. That power half Nelson, now he's going to kick out of the legs. He's got that power half Nelson in. Switches off to regular half Nelson. That could be a fall right there for Kyle Fank, and it is. In 129, <clears throat> Kyle Fank will win by fall in 129. And that's just what the Mustangs uh, were after right there. That's going to close the gap to 28 to 20 with three matches left. And uh, Jamie, that was a match where Independence was highly favored, and Kyle Fank went out and did exactly what he was supposed to do. Well, he did, and that's what they, that's what you got to do. So, as we're going to move up to weight class 195, we'll hear from Scott Casper once again. And Chester, senior for West Delaware. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott Taylor. His opponent is on a 12-match winning streak, ladies and gentlemen.
the 28-9 record. He looks to make his mark at 195. Wrestling out of Independence for Independence. He's a sophomore. Would you please welcome Matt McMillan. You heard it there. We've got Scott Taylor and Matt McMillan set to go at it here as these two wrestled in the duel at the Battle of Waterloo. McMillan picking up a fall in 428 over Scott Taylor. As Scott Taylor comes into this tonight with a 19 and 17 record. Matt McMillan from Independence comes in here 28 and nine. He's currently on a 12 match winning streak is Matt McMillan. And Scott Taylor comes in here looking to end that winning streak here tonight. But it's gonna be a tough task. McMillan's tough. He's looking to get the Mustangs back into this duel. Well, this is an opportunity for uh, Scott Taylor to, to uh, reach down deep inside that singlet and whatever whatever is inside of that body of his, he's taking on a very, very good sophomore, Matt McMillan, for uh, Scott Taylor to really wrestle the match of his life right here. And Matt McMillan would like no, uh, uh, like no other than to repeat what he did, the Battle of Waterloo score fall here and get his Mustangs, uh, get his Mustangs closer here. They're within eight points uh, right now. And uh, that's a good job by Scott Taylor with a nice inside collar tie on McMillan. And McMillan's going to give Taylor a shove off the edge of the mat. 107 left to go. Weight class 195. The Hawks still clinging to a 28 to 20 lead with 1 2. We got three matches left. There will be no match at 106 as uh, West Delaware will have an open spot there. Tell you what, looking at that Independence lineup, at 106, they've got a sophomore starter. 113, Mitch Evans is only junior. Drew Davis is a sophomore at 120. Tanner Erickson Dale is a freshman at 26. Peyton Olting is a freshman at 132. Luke House is a sophomore. So Jamie, looking at that, looking at uh, uh, Independence's lineup from 106 all the way through to 195, they only have two seniors in there. They will have they will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'll have ten. Ten of those guys returning for next year. They will be the team to beat. Yeah, they certainly will. And then you look at that Walmart Conference. They're going to be they're going to be right in it this Saturday, and uh, they're going to be just as tough next year, if not tougher. Because you talked about it, the young, the youth that they've got coming back isn't just kids gaining experience just on the mat to be on the mat this year. They're they're out there competing with some of the best kids in the state, as uh, competing with the best kids in the state, and they're going to be back and they're going to be tough. Yeah, you know, Coach Doyle will have them wrestling during the summer. They've got that tremendous wrestling room. They got a place to work out. They've got a place to. Uh, they've got a place to wrestle. Taylor's choice. He's going to defer over to McMillan. A lot of push and shove and no takedowns there in that first period. Again, West Delaware is hanging on to a 28 to 20 dual meet lead, but conceivably you got to add that six in at 106. Right now it's 28 to 26 with three matches left. It's 28 to uh, 28 to 20 on our scoreboard, but act in, in uh, actuality, there's a one-point escape by McMillan. He got up quickly, split the hands of Taylor, and we are going back to our feet. That was about a one and a half second stand-up for the sophomore from Independence. Well, Jamie, Scotty Taylor, the senior, he's been in this position. No, he's been he's been part of this for for four years. He knows what it's like to wrestle in this duel. Matt McMillan. Uh, last year, it's only it's only second year part of this duel. You know, if you're Scotty Taylor, you got to draw on that experience. You got to draw on that uh, and, and use that in this match. And it is. And and you know, Scott Taylor has been a part of this. And you mentioned uh, you talk about this big time atmosphere, and that's what we've got here tonight. It's a big meat atmosphere. Uh, the way they've got it set up, the the projector going on the uh, one wall or the scoreboard that's got the video capabilities over there. You've got the um, colored strobe lights over there when the wrestlers come in they play loud music you know Scott Taylor as a senior you've got to draw like you said draw that experience you know how to wrestle you can be calm in this kind of atmosphere hopefully you can uh, take that advantage over the youngster from uh, Independence McMillan so far it's a 1-0 lead for McMillan courtesy of that escape McMillan trying to work a hard collar tie on Taylor Scotty Taylor is really good in this position he is absolutely tough in this position He's very good at hand fighting. He's very good at collar ties. But I'll tell you what, he's got to make that. He's got to set up that throw by, and that's going to be stalling on Taylor. That's going to be a one point for McMillan, and you knew that was going to come. 
real You're early in a come. match to be getting those, especially your second one. <clears throat> and uh, McMillan trying to pressure, trying to uh, force Scott Taylor into some action right here. And Taylor squaring up his stance, hard collar tie now by, by McMillan, really working the back. There's a long shot by McMillan. Nice down block by Taylor. Taylor's real good in this position. Let's see if he can pick up two. There's a two point takedown by Scott Taylor. He's very, very good in that position. It's knotted up at deuces right now. If he can ride out McMillan for the 16 seconds, he's got an opportunity to go to the third period and uh, get the lead. That's what Scott Taylor needs to do. There's an inside stand up by McMillan and he's gonna score a one point escape, 12 seconds left to go. Three to two is your score right now in favor of the outstanding sophomore from Independence, McMillan. McMillan now pushing Taylor off the edge of the mat. Scotty Taylor's got to circle in, apply forward pressure back, and you can't be, uh, you can't let somebody shove you around like that, Jamie. No, you can't, because you're going to get, you know, especially, you know, you, you hate to say it, and the referees make their own decisions here, but, uh, you know, when the fans are sitting here yelling, stalling, when you're backing up, sooner or later it's going to come. It's going to get the officials' attention, and he doesn't even need the fan, the crowd yelling it. He knows. He, he sees what's going on. So if you're backing up and, uh, McMillan's taking all the shots. Uh, our official's going to notice that. And he has noticed it. And uh, Coach Voss up saying, hey, you got a circle. McMillan right now is imposing his will on Scott Taylor, showing how physical he is. McMillan, for a sophomore, he's put together pretty well. Heavy on the he legs, big shoulders, hard grip, solid, just a solid 195-pounder here with 134 left to go. McMillan. McMillan is up three to two. Again, last time these two wrestled, it was McMillan winning by a fall in 428. And right now, there's gonna be warning now against Taylor. One more for McMillan. Right now, it's four to two with 119 left to go. And Scott Taylor's gotta hold his ground inside, Jamie. You've gotta square your stance up. You've gotta hold your ground, and you've gotta apply some pressure forward. Right now, McMillan, again, is doing all the pushing. He's using that collar tie. He's trying to hit throw bys. And Scott Taylor right now, he may get disqualified. We've got a couple of officials that are making, making these guys wrestle. Scott Taylor has got to go forward. And uh, right now, he's using the edge of the mat. And uh, with 103 left to go, it's 4-2. to two, And he's got to circle back in. Matt McMillan doing a great job. Taylor backing up, and we might get another stalling. That was a straight backup. That was a straight backup by Scott Taylor. He's got to go forward and hold his ground. Throw by attempt by McMillan. Countered off. Squared off by Taylor. Taylor with the hand control now on McMillan. McMillan doing a great job with forward pressure. Taylor's got to circle in, and he's got to shove. There's Stalling. That's going to be two. That's going to be one now. That should be two, I think. I think that's the third one, Jamie. We've got the cheerleaders calling it down there. We've got the Independence cheerleaders down there calling it. 41 seconds left to go. I don't think we've ever seen a we've never seen a termination, Jamie, in high school. I haven't seen a termination this year in high school. McMillan now is going to go up on top. McMillan's going to go up on top of Taylor. After Scotty Taylor, you got to work some hand control and keep moving right here. This might be a better spot for Scott Taylor to be. Got to come up. Though. I mean, you can't you can't just crawl. You can't just crawl and try to get out. You've got to come up. There's Taylor up to his feet, working some hand control. He's going to pick up one. There's a one escape. Now we're going neutral, and now you got to get back in there. And you might get dinged. This could be a this could be a disqualification. If you're Matt McMillan now, you got to keep pushing. If you're Scott Taylor, you got to hold your ground. Taylor backing up again. McMillan applying forward pressure. Scott Taylor's not doing anything to get that right tie off off McMillan. McMillan shoving Taylor off. Coach Voss, he would like to get out there and wrestle this match. Okay, well, we got the crowd going right now. 15 seconds left to go. McMillan with the hard collar tie. Taylor with the retie now. McMillan trying to, trying to throw by. Taylor doing a nice job blocking up. Scott Taylor holding his ground. McMillan with the headbutt on Taylor. One second left to go, and that's going to do it. That's a 6-3, the simple decision. 6-3, simple decision. The Hawks will get blank there. That'll give the Mustangs three. Right now it's 28 to 23 in favor of the Mustangs. And we got Will Wenger, I think, coming up. Well, you having a good time here tonight? 
three and a tight score. Let's go to 220 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, they call him the Willie Wonka at the Pinning Factory out of Masonville. He's a senior. How about a welcome for West Delaware's William Wanger? And his opponent with a big time record of the ball, 24 14 on the year, wrestling at 220. From Rowley, Iowa, a junior, it's big Jason Grover. There you heard it. We're up to weight class 220 for West Delaware. We're going to have Will Wenger, the senior, with a 14 and 17 record. And for Independence, the junior, with a 24 and 14 record, Jason Grover, as our score is 24, or excuse me, 28 to 23 in favor of West Delaware right now. I'm sorry, Jamie. My penmanship is not up to its normal standards tonight. <laughs> I've been. I've been up and down and around and uh, getting a little excited watching, uh, watching these quality teams get after it. There's a snap down by Grover. Will Wenger tried to attack a leg and a go behind, and we're going up. Grover's 195 pounder moving up to 220, and uh, these two wrestled at the Battle of Waterloo with Grover winning by a fall in 305. I believe that was a hard cradle on Will Wenger. So if the Hawks are going to win this duel, Jamie, they've got to split these next two matches. Uh, somebody's, got to, somebody's got to win a match. If you're independents, you're thinking, hey, we got six coming. Right now we're up by a point. You know, we got to just win these next two matches, and the meet's ours. Yeah, and, you, you know, that's what you got to do. If you're the, it, like you said, you mentioned this earlier, this, uh, yeah, it's 28-23, but really it's 29-28. So a uh, couple more matches here The if the Mustangs, uh, you know, they win this match, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting. And there's a very nice duck under, very nice duck under by Jason Grover. And I'll tell you what, if they get a fall here, Jamie, a fall could uh, a fall. Grover's got a cradle on Winger, no points. He's working that hard cross face. Winger now trying to pull the cross face off. I'll tell you what the. Uh, the uh, Independence Mustangs have found the kryptonite of the West Delaware Hawks with that, with that cross face. Grover's got Will Winger in that cradle one more time. And he's going to step over. Winger's on his back in that hard cross face cradle. A fall right here could salt this duel away. Independence Mustang fans up on their feet as, the, as Grover, Grover from Independence is trying to load Will Winger up. Winger's got that right shoulder up off the mat yet. Uh, referee looking close, three seconds left to go in the first period, and that's going to do it. Nice cradle. Nice cradle by Jason Grover, and Will Winger's got to go to the blood corner. This is the uh, first blood timeout uh, that we've seen uh, tonight. So, uh, Jamie, let's take a short timeout, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. we got two matches left in this exciting duel on Eastern Iowa Sports Station, Mix 94.7 KMCH. Welcome back here to Independence High School as the team, team score 28-23 and another takedown there for Grover as we're back to action. Will Wanger and Jason Grover. It's 28-23, West Delaware leads it. Again, the Hawks will forfeit at weight class 106 here tonight, so the Hawks uh, fa factor that in, and it's 29-28 right now in favor of the Mustangs. So we'll see what Will Wanger and Richie Hevron can do for the Hawks here coming up. Yeah, Jamie, it's about... Uh you know, it's about the Mustangs doing, getting their job done. But we've seen Will Wenger. Will Wenger's come out of some scrambles. And he's got a two-point reversal on Grover. We've seen Will Wenger. He's Mr. Funk out there, Jamie. He's come. He's got, uh, uh, he's loose. He's limber. He's got some crazy hips. We've seen him come out of some scrambles and throw people on their back and get the fall. And that's what the Hawks need right here from Will Wenger. They need, they need to hit, see the magic he had at the Battle of Waterloo against Al Burnett and uh, come up with some big points here. And he's using that weight right now to ride Grover. Grover with the short sit out. Winger with the tight waist looking for a chicken wing. Will Winger's got a chicken wing on that left side of Grover. He gets a little bit high with 47 seconds left to go. A sit out turning by Grover. Winger's got a chicken wing on the, on the right side. Excuse me, on the left side. Now a power half Nelson on the right side. Will Winger knows what to do with the power half Nelson. He's getting a little bit high. He's got to cast himself back around. A sit out turn in by Grover. Grover's going to pick up one. No, not yet. As Winger dives in on that left leg of Grover. Grover's going to try to turn a gut wrench. 
Wenger, Wenger's just got to pull Grover in. He's got Grover in on his back. Will Wenger has Grover on his back. Let's see if he can pull him in. Wenger's trying to pull Grover in on the mat. He's going to pick up two near fall. And uh, illegal headlock by Grover. By Wenger. It's going to be a one point. Illegal headlock on, on Wenger, Wenger by Wenger. Oh, we got to get this straightened out here. Oh, yes, it was by Grover. So it's going to be seven, two five. Yep. Two back and one penalty point. Tell you what, that's what Will Wenger can do. And I'll tell you what, he had Grover going. And uh, that's that extra weight that he's making, uh, making the youngster pay now. One second left to go. It's seven to five. Let's see whose choice is going to be. Will Wenger's choice, he's going to go up. Well, we're going to go neutral. We thought it was, uh, thought it was Wenger's choice. It's Grover's choice. <laughs> Will Wenger picks up two. This thing is tied seven to seven. Wenger's got a chicken wing. He's working on a bar on the left side of Grover. See if he can lock that chicken wing up. Power half Nelson now by Wenger. If he can get out to the side and drive Grover over with it, he's going to pick up that ankle. This thing is tied up at 7-7 seven to seven with 131 left to go. Will Wenger now trying to load a cross-face cradle up. This is where Will Wenger is at his best. Jason Grover trying to get up to a short sit position. Tell you what, what a match we have going on right here. Grover is a junior. And Jamie, this is, uh, this is that senior, Will Wenger. We talked about him in that senior interview. Will Wenger wanting to do something special. This would be something special right here. Inside, sit out uh -oh. turn in by Grover. And he's going to pick up two. And now he's got Wenger on his back. Sit out turn in by Grover. He's got Will Wenger on his back. Could be a fall for Jason Grover. Grover with the reverse half Nelson trying to tee out on Wenger. Referee looking close for the fall. 54 seconds goes the fall. There's the fall. 507. Jason Grover winning by fall in 507. I tell you what, that uh, that puts the uh, Buckdale Trophy in the Mustangs Trophy case. The West Delaware Hawks cannot catch him now. Will Wenger going down. It's 28, 29 to 28 in favor of the Mustangs. They're going to pick up six at 106, so it's actually 35 to 28. The best the, Hawk, the best the Hawks can do right now, Jamie, is a fall at 34. So what, uh, Jason Grover, and again, that's we talked about that. There were several times tonight where the West Delaware Hawks had the Mustangs on their back, couldn't get the fall, and the Mustangs have turned it around. They got the West Delaware Hawks on their back, and the, and the Hawks could not fight off. That's going to be the difference in this match tonight. And, and there's been too many times we've seen that all season where the Hawks have not been able to finish when they get kids on their back. If you get someone on your back, you got to smell, smell the blood. You've got to come out here, get the fall. And the Hawks, unfortunately, tonight and for a lot of parts of the season, uh, they've gotten ahead of themselves. They haven't come out and got got the falls that they needed, and uh, it 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 costs it's going to cost them a dual meet here tonight, and that trophy. Take that trophy out of the trophy case tonight, as it's going to stay here in Independence. Well, this is Mitch Siliski taking on Rich Hebron. These two have not wrestled. And Hebron that comes in here. He's 20 and 14 on the season. Siliski comes in here. He's nine and seven on the year. So uh, Siliski has split time with uh, Brett Bowers at heavyweight. Last time, uh, Richie Heverin wrestled Brett Bowers and won by a fall. Again, the Hawks are going to give up. They're going to give up uh, six at uh, 106. And uh, right now it's uh, 35, 35 to 28. If the Hawks could happen to get a fall here, it would be 35 to 34. And there's lots of things that, uh, if this happens, uh, Mitch Siliski, he would like to... He would like to put an exclamation point on this duel tonight. And again, this is for a conference seating. Tomorrow night at Marion is the seating meeting for this conference meet. And I'll tell you what, Richie Heverin would like to get a high seed, as would the senior from Independence. Two similar built heavyweights. Richie Heverin, short and stocky. Mitch Siliski, 
He's not, uh, he's not the tallest heavyweight that we've seen. Rich Heverin with a, with a quick first two steps. And uh, Selisky, we have not seen him wrestle yet this year, Jamie. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you what, he's, there's a lot of good uh, heavyweight coaches in that independence wrestling room and um, great training partners. Richie Hever now, Richie Hever now with 28 seconds left to go. No points yet as both wrestlers are still working collar ties and a lot of pushing and shoving. Heverin, Heverin's got a quick shot. He's got a good sweep single. I'm not sure if he's gonna shoot this on Siliski. Again, you're still trying to win this match for that conference seat on Saturday. Six seconds left to go in this first period. We're gonna go to the second period with goose eggs up on the scoreboard. Our, our, our match score right now, Independence has taken their first lead. It's taken them, Jamie, Independence has not had a lead in this duel until that last match number 12. Match number 12, the Hawks have led up until match 12, then Independence took the lead on match uh, 12. Yeah, you know, they, they've wrestled. The, the Hawks, you know, the Hawks have come out here and they've wrestled, they've wrestled well, but Independence, and we talked about it when the Hawks were up at intermission there, that uh, Independence had some horses coming up and they definitely showed, uh, showed their strength in, that, uh, in their upper weights. And you knew that was coming. You know, West Delaware strong, strong right there in the middle and they flex their muscles a little bit, and uh, Independence just uh, flexed their muscles just a little bit more when it counted. And again, you got this huge crowd on their side, and I'll tell you what, that's a lot of emotion, a lot of adrenaline, and Jamie, when this thing is over, we might see some uh, Independent student bodies. Uh, they might just rush the floor here and, and pick up that Buckdell Trophy, as it's been in the West Delaware Trophy case since its, since its accept, inception four years ago. And, uh, the Mustangs uh, will take that and post that in their uh, trophy case and they will have the bragging rights and uh, with, their, with the number of outstanding wrestlers that they've got coming back, uh, they, might, they might keep a hold of that trophy for quite some time. It, that's very possible, you know, you talk about their, their, the strength they've got as their sophomores and their juniors, so next year, you know, when they're seniors and juniors and then you've got uh, these sophomores that are gonna come up here and by the time their senior year is done, they could, uh, they could have this thing three times. You're exactly right. And West Delaware with nine seniors in their lineup have, have some holes to fill. And um, the JV matches that we watched here were very competitive tonight. Looked like they were about 500. So, you know, the Hawks definitely have some work to do and the Mustangs, uh, the Mustangs will hold the edge. 19 seconds left to go, second period, a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, not a lot of action. And um, uh, we're gonna go to the third period with uh, Richie Heverin from West Delaware holding a 1-0 lead, courtesy of that second period inside stand-up escape on Selisky from Jessa, or from Independence. That's gonna do it right there. All over the region on Saturday will be conference tournaments. Up at Starmont, they will hold the Upper Iowa Conference for the first time. And Lisbon will host the Tri-Rivers Conference tournament for the first time. So uh, we've got a lot of action, and we'll have updates from both of those tournaments. Yours truly and Jamie Vasky, we will be right back here on Saturday morning starting at 10 a.m. Probably come on about a quarter to 10 if uh, Swish can speed up his... His basketball report there, Jamie. Well, it'll it'll be a sh it'll be a uh, abbreviated coach's corner on Saturday morning. So, all right, one point escape by Selisky, and this thing is tied up at one to one. One to one with 127 left to go in this match. So uh, somebody's going to have to take a shot. Somebody's going to have to take a gamble, or this thing could go to overtime. We've seen Richie Hevering go to uh, several overtimes during the course of the year and been able to pull himself out. Again, a lot of uh, hand fighting, a lot of work, uh, a lot of upper body work going on right here. Again, uh, once this meet is over, uh, they're, gonna, they're going to clear the gym and then Co and Wartburg will take the stage. And uh, we will not broadcast that meet. We're just gonna sit and watch some uh, good high, some good college, some good D3 college wrestling. Wartburg with uh, 10 ranked wrestlers come in. Coe with four or five ranked wrestlers. 
All right, we got the Independence Mustang fans up on their feet saying, let's go Big C. Ski. Big Ski. They've got. Oh, they've they, got Ski. They've got Ski. They've let's got go their ski. nicknames in these uh, media program, media guides that we got here tonight. So they call him Ski as the end of Seleski. All right. A lot of push and shove and still 19 seconds left to go. And this thing could go to overtime. And it probably will go to overtime. Richie Heaven trying to force a little action right there with short time left. And uh, Coach Javas said, hey, don't force a bad shot here and give this match up. And Selisky would like to uh, force, have Richie force a bad shot. Three seconds left to go. We're going to have our first overtime match of the evening. And here we go. First overtime match. And here we go. Right to overtime. We've got a one minute. This is sudden death. The first takedown is going to win. Jamie and both wrestlers just content to push and shove right now. Why they are pushing and shoving out there. Uh, we must say a big thank you to the host independents. Uh, they've been great hosts tonight. We're set up in a good, uh, good view here. And uh, great hospitality room. And uh, a lot of good fixings in there uh, for the media and for everybody involved here. We'd like to thank them for that. Uh, Coach Doyle and the staff here have done an excellent job uh, so far with this media frenzy and everything that this is about tonight. It's been quite a thing. There's Richie Hebron with an underhook, tries to lift Selisky off the mat, and Selisky finds the edge, and no points. That was good action there by the heavyweight from West Delaware. Selisky now with an underhook to the left side of but to the right side of Heverin. Heverin's going to back out of it. 14 seconds left to go, and we are going to go to period five. If this thing scored, there's a shuck attempt by Selisky, and quick feet by Richie Heverin. He backs out of it. Three seconds left to go, and we're going to go to period number five. Let's see whose choice is going to be. It's going to be Selisky's choice, and he's going to go down. Well, if you're Richie Heaven, you got to ride him out for 30. Spiral ride here. Selisky's very good at getting to his feet. There's a sit out by uh, Selisky. Richie's going to pick up that inside leg and dump Selisky to his side. That's a nice job. Good defense there by, uh, just, by Heaven. Just six seconds gone here as they go 30, 30 seconds. Each wrestler gets his choice. If they get an escape, the match continues. Nice job by uh, Selisky to get to his feet. Heaven with a nice front trip on Selisky, and Selisky finds the edge. And Heaven's going to switch sides on Selisky. Looked over to Coach uh, Lenz and Coach Payton, and Selisky coming right to his feet. Selisky popping his hips. Heaven's going to try to lift, and we're going to get warning against Heaven for driving Selisky off the edge of the mat. 13 seconds left to go. Jamie, you got to pick up an ankle here. If you're Richie Heaven, you got to find an ankle or a spiral ride. You got to keep your fate weight forward. There's a Heaven with an ankle. There's a lift by Selisky to his feet. Sit out, turn in by Heaven. A roll, roll by Selisky. Selisky going to pick up two reversal. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a nice series of movements by the big heavyweight from Independence. He came to a standing switch. I think Heaven thought he was going to stop. And he uh, picked up the he picked up the two point reversal that was huge right there. And uh, Selisky's going to go to optional start. He's going to make that triangle and he's going to cut Heaven loose. And it's uh, three to two. Twenty five seconds left to go. Now, if you're Richie Heaven, you got to score a takedown here. And again, neither wrestler has been successful. Good hips by Selisky as he's squaring up his stance. Heaven's got to force the tempo here a little bit. <coughs> Heaven's going to shove Selisky off the edge of the mat. Three to two is your score. With Selisky using that reversal. 10, 11 seconds left to go. 10 seconds, a long shot by Heaven. Heaven's in deep on a single. Let's see if he can finish it. He's got Selisky's head. Two! That's got to be two right there. Oh, he's got a wizard. Selisky's got a wizard on Heaven. That's going to be a three to two win. Three to two win. That'll give the Mustangs three more. And the Mustangs will pick up. 
Let's go. Get this thing over with. We will be a full uh, foot right there, Jamie. We'll take a break. We'll come back, add up some stats, and give you your totals. See if we can catch up with Coach Boss. Get you on your way. Get you to that basketball game. And don't forget, John Swisher is going to have the remainder of that basketball game tonight. As uh, as we're going to have uh, West Delaware boys basketball tonight. The conclusion of that game for you here in just a little bit. As uh, it's going to be West Delaware boys basketball at Makokata. So. We'll take a short break, come back. You're listening to High School Wrestling from KMCH Sports. And Jamie, welcome back. Uh, uh, I, I was just mentioning, I don't know that we'll be able to get either coach up here tonight. There's so much media here tonight. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get Coach Doyle for a couple of comments or not. Um, uh, we'll try to spy that out. But let's recap this meet tonight as it was a doozy. We started at weight class 113 where top ranked Patrick Woods from West Delaware used four takedowns. And uh, he scored a 16-6 major decision over Mitch Evans. That put the West Delaware Hawks up 4-0. Weight class 120, Logan Riley taking on Drew Davis. Drew Davis using three takedowns and some near-fall points to post a 13-6 decision on Logan Riley from West Delaware, making the score 4-3 after two matches. Weight class 126, number eight ranked in class 2A, Sam Phillips, making short work of the freshman Tanner Erickson Dale. Phillips winning by a fall in 36 seconds. That put the Hawks up 10 to three. Weight class 132, the outstanding senior from West Delaware, Connor Wickman, following Phillips' suit with a uh, short takedown and a fall in 46 seconds over Peyton Nolting from Independence, making the score 16 to three. The Hawks were on a roll at weight class 138, Bo Vasky getting a payback over Luke House. Four takedowns for Vasky and some back points. A 14 to one major decision. That put the Hawks up after five matches, 20 to three, and they had the momentum on their side. Well, it just takes one person to stop the momentum, and that was top ranked Chase Straw from Independence, the number one ranked undefeated, a junior for Independence, five takedowns and a 20 to five tech fall over senior Tim Tutt from West Delaware. That gave the Independence Mustangs five, closing the gap at 20 to eight. Weight class 152 in one of the swing matches. We saw two swing matches here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The first was at 138 with Vasky getting uh, a big win over House. And then at 152, sophomore uh, Max Reidenauer for West Delaware taking on Jake Jewell. Well, Jake Jewell uh, caught uh, Reidenauer reaching back, locked him up in a drive cradle, and he threw Reidenauer to his back and won by a fall in 157. That closed the gap 20 to uh, 14, still in favor of the Hawks. And weight class 160, top ranked Jake Voss taking on Nick Holt. This was a close match last time these two wrestled. Well, it was all Jake Voss tonight. Eight takedowns en route to a 20 to five tech fall. That gave the Hawks five more, 25 to 14. Weight class 170, one of the best matches of the night. Uh, senior number eight ranked Brent Lammers taking on, uh, or junior Lammers taking on senior Zach Kramer. This was a four to one win for Lammers. And I'll tell you what, it was, it was back and forth for six minutes. 28 to 14 lead for the Hawks. Then weight class 182, this is where the Independence Mustangs started to take control. Kyle Fank, ranked number third in class, ranked number three in class 2A. He's the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. He, uh, uh, first period uh, takedown, first period fall in 129 over Corey Russell. That closed the gap to 28 to 20. West Delaware still in the lead. Weight class 195, another outstanding sophomore, Matt McMillan for Independence. A hard fought six to three win. Scotty Taylor wrestling a, a smart match, but losing six to three. That gave the Mustangs three more, 28 to 23. And then at weight class 220, Will Wenger for West Delaware losing to Jason Grover by fall in 507. And that was the first lead that the Mustangs would take on the night. They would not relinquish it. Interesting thing about that, Wenger had Grover on his back. Couldn't quite get the fall there, but it was, it was uh, uh, Grover turning the tables on Wenger, getting the fall, and that sealed the deal for the Mustangs. 29 to 28, they would take their first lead. And then at 285, we saw that hard-fought match. Mitch Selisky winning a 3-2 in, uh, in overtime, fifth period of overtime, 3-2 over Richie Heverin. 
making the score 32 to 28 in favor of the Mustangs. And then at weight class 106, the Hawks are, again are open there. And that gave the uh, Mustangs six more, making our final score 38 to 28. And the Mustangs hoisted the Buckdale Trophy. On the night, the West Delaware Hawks won six matches. We wrestled 13. The Hawks won six. The Mustangs won seven. And of course, they took that forefoot at 103. Pins on the night, West Delaware had two falls. Independence had three falls. Takedowns on the night, West Delaware owned the takedown 22 to 13. Major decisions, West Delaware had two. Independence had zero. Tech falls, they split them evenly one to one. So Jamie, the tail of the tape tonight was, was uh, uh, the Independence Mustangs getting those three falls in the forefoot where they needed to. And that outscored West Delaware, had two majors but you know you get four points instead of six, and uh, that was really the tail of the tape tonight. Yeah, it really was, and you know, coming in here, we knew uh, if, if you're West Delaware, you lost by uh, 11 points the last time, you knew you were gonna have to make that up somewhere, and and you started off uh, at 113, where the last time these two teams were in a duel, uh, the last two, the last time these two teams were in a duel, uh, you picked up a tech fall where tonight you just got a major. Um, you look at, you know, Jake Foss did a great job. He improved on a major decision. Uh, but, you know, looking looking down through that, you got a, you got a pin last time against a backup uh, heavyweight at the Battle of Waterloo. You know, the, in order for West Delaware to win this dual meet tonight, things were just, everything was going to have to be perfect for them. And unfortunately, some things didn't go their way. But you, you can't say things didn't go West Delaware's way. Uh, Independence did what they needed to do. The Mustangs came out here and did exactly what they needed to do. When they got the Hawks on their back, they were able to get pins. Uh, when they got on their back, they were able to fight off. And that's and that's that's what you need if you're going to win a dual meet. You have to do things right. Fundamentals of wrestling. You get someone on your back, you pin them. You get on your back, you fight like heck to get out of there. And uh, you know the the Hawks didn't do a great again at times didn't do a good job of fighting off their back when they got there and one thing that they definitely didn't do is when they got people on their back they didn't get pins where they needed to and that's so important uh, in dual meets if, if you get someone on your back on their back smell that blood be a shark get out there and get the fall some of the hawks weren't able to do that tonight and, and, and like we said it cost them a dual meet so we will uh the, but we're going to be back here Saturday. You know, the Hawks The Hawks aren't done. Uh, I, I Personally, I think West Delaware is a better tournament team than they are a dual team. You know, the Hawks come in here, they're ranked 5th, Independence ranked 10th. Uh, but I tell you what, I, I think the Hawks are a much better tournament team than they are a dual team. And that's what you got to do. you got to come in here on Saturday, and, and, you, and your horses have got to come out here and get wins. And that goes for Independence, too. You look at, uh, for West Delaware, Patrick Woods, uh, Sam Phillips, Bo Vasky, uh, Jake Voss, Brent Lammers, those guys have got to come out here and make some noise, get people on their backs, and get falls. For your Mustangs, if they want to win the conference tournament, you got to do the same thing. Your uh, Chase Straw, your Evans has to get come up and start picking up some, some big points for them. Uh, Jake Jewell, Kyle Fank, those big guys have got to come in here and start making some noise because uh, there's a team farther east to here on Highway 20 that's going to compete be competing for the same thing that these two teams are and that's Western Dubuque it's going to be I'd say it's probably going to be a three pony race on Saturday um, Williamsburg they're probably fourth and I think that's prob that should probably be where they finish up I don't think they have the horses to come in uh, to Independence and win it but I tell you what they got some studs but you know it's going to be a brawl all day. It's going to be a battle Saturday with West Delaware Independence and Western Dubuque. Hey, you can't count out Mount Vernon or Solon either, Jamie, coming from the south. They're going to be dark horses. They've got some outstanding individuals. I don't know if they have the team depth, but, again, they've got some outstanding individuals. So, Jamie, I don't think we can compete with K.J. Pilcher, Coach Gable. Uh, Coach Mike Doyle is down uh, uh, with uh, those two outstanding uh, wrestling uh, boosters and coaches and riders, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get Coach Voss up here. Um, we don't see him. We're scanning the crowd there. Um, not sure if we're going to be able to get him up here for some uh, post-meet comments. But, hey, we got basketball coming for you right after this. So uh, we will uh, catch up with Coach Voss for the Coach's Corner on Saturday morning, so stay tuned for that as we will be over here in Independence for that Coach's Corner on Saturday morning. And uh, so stay tuned for that. 
as uh, we'll have an abbreviated Coach's Corner on Saturday as we get you ready for that Walmack tournament starting at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Stay with us tonight as we've got West Delaware Boys Basketball. It's halftime in Makokata as the West Delaware Boys are at Makokata. We're going to send it to John Swisher and Bill Logan for the rest of the... Eh, probably not Bill Logan. We'll send it to John Swisher and his color partner for tonight over or down in Makokata. Tomorrow night we've got West Delaware Girls Basketball at Anamosa tomorrow night. Then Saturday morning at 9 we've got the Coach's Corner, Area, area Coach's Corner with John Swisher. I'll catch up with Coach Voss. And then we've got I, or West Delaware Wrestling right here in Independence with the Walmack Tournament starting at 10 o'clock. That's going to do it for us here tonight. I'd like to thank the sponsors of High School Wrestling on KMCH. We appreciate all 43 of our high school sports boosters. I'd like to thank Paul Glazer for running the boards for us this evening. And most of all, thank you, the listeners. That's going to do it from the Independence Gymnasium here in Independence, Iowa. Once again, the final, the Independence Mustangs 38, West Delaware 28. You've been listening to Eastern Iowa's Sports Station, Mix 94.7 KMCH. Good night, everybody.